Um, good afternoon, Greg 12s. I'm Mrs. Um, Wessels from Unicia High School in Bloemfontein. And I just want to say welcome back to um, the lesson on cash budgets, projected income statement and um, a problem solving question. Um, cash budget, you did in grade 11 and also the projected income statement. And that's where they ask you most of the uh, calculations. In grade 12, they um, more likely ask you to interpret something or to do some calculations on certain things or to give your opinion. So um, I've got two activities here I'm going to try to do. I cannot do everything. You must just um, improve all the time whatever they ask you. Remember what you've, you've had learned or what somebody taught you, then you can work from there. I really hope that you're going to enjoy the class. Okay, I've got cash budget here from the September 2017 Pumalanga question paper. You're provided with the incomplete cash budget of Clare Traders. The business is owned by my daughter, Tubela. Calculate the amount of bad debts that will, will be written off in November. Okay, the moment that you see, that you hear that they talk about bad debts, you know you must go to your debtors, um, your debtors pay, um, payment trend. And that's what we've got there. And they say that the debtors currently pay according to the following trend, 10% in the month of so very, very important. Make sure that you read your first, I say there's three legs, two or three legs. Make sure that you read your first leg um, clearly, that you know that it's in the month of sale. 70% in the first month following the month, and then 18% and the balance. If you take 10 plus 70 plus 18, that gives you 98%, so 2% is written off in the third month following the month of sale, in the third month following the month of sale. So that is, um, they say we must calculate the amount be written off in November, in November 2017. So that means that we must go back to, we must say, okay, um, Whatever they bought in August, let's quickly say August, it will be September, October, November. That is the third month because remember your first leg is already in August, so that we are going to work with August. So you work with August, remember you work with August credit um, sales, August credit sales, and that gives us, I think that, yo, they were very. Um, we were very lucky because they basically gave us everything there. They gave us all the sales. Remember, this will not be, this will not always look like this. But this, in this case, it looks like this. Okay, if they don't give you this, if, for example, I can take out this credit sales, then you go back there and you say August and you take the total sales of 462,000. They say 60% of the total cash, uh, the total sales are for cash, and you times it by 40%, and that gives you the 184,800 that you see there. So we are basically going to work with this credit sales. It's given to you in a in a debtors collection schedule. Remembering grade nine, you had to do the debtors collection schedule a lot of times, but in grade 12, you can see there for a, for only a little bit of of um, the only. They gave you a lot of information. They just want you to finish off the data collection schedule. That is question 6.3. But um, so they gave you a lot of information there. And we say the credit sales is 184,800. Remember, you must work with your credit sales. And we say times 2%. And we've got the 184,800 times 2 over 100. And that gives us the bad debts as 3696. Three six nine six. Okay, the second question there is mention to the owner wants to improve the collection for debtors. Mention two strategies that the business can use to encourage debtors to pay their accounts on time. Um, the normal two is that we are going to give them discount if they pay within time. We are going to charge them with interest if they don't pay on time. That is the normal two that we always that we always say. So give discount to early settlement, charge interest on overdue accounts. They send, send out regular reminders. And yeah, most of the time they only ask you two, they can ask you three. Yeah, they don't ask you more than three. 
Um, I will say to encourage debtors to pay their accounts on time. Um, yeah, set a credit um, term, but there is a credit term because early settlement means there is a credit term. They um, apply to the credit term. And remember, what is your credit term? That is that 30 days or 60 days that they gave you to, to, um, to pay your account. Complete the data collection schedule. That is very easy. Whatever you've got there is also what I've got on my answering paper. Um, all the credit sales are given. We must just go back to our legs. I name it, I already mentioned that I name it one to three legs. So, and I will go, I will start with August. I will say the three legs is 10% in the month of sale, then 70% and then 18. So the first time that we're going to receive money for August will be in August, September, October. Now you go there and you go there. That Those two are your, um, your budget period. So what you do there is you, oh, now I lose the, sorry, I lose the, um, the three legs. Let me quickly write down the three legs. The first one is 10% in the month of sale. Then we've got 70% after 30 days. So that means in the next month. And then we've got 18% after 60 days. Okay, now we can go there. And um, so what, what I do, what I want you to do, if they give you information like this, use whatever they gave you. Use that one, only that one, to check on yourself. So in our case, we say October is our last leg. After the last leg is 18%, so we say 184.800 times 18% and that gives us 33264 and then we know that we are on the, on, on the right path. October was your last leg, so there's nothing in November. We know we're going to receive money for September the first time in September, October, November. So we've got the middle leg and the last leg. The middle leg is already done for us. You can check it if you want to, 158400. You say times 70%. That gives you 11088, 100% correct, but now you must do the last leg. So you must do the 18% leg. You must do the 18% leg. 158400 times 18%, that gives us 28512. 28512. Then we go to October. When are we going to receive the money for the first time? In the same month, October, November, December. First leg, second leg. Check the first one. You can see it's 10%. You can see it's 10%. The second leg is 70%. So now we must do the 70% leg. So we say 148.800 times 70. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. 148.800 times 70%. And that gives me 104.160. 104.160. When are we going to receive November? We are going to receive November the first leg, December and January. We only work with the first leg, so there's nothing in October, and that gives us 175,400 times the 10%, and that gives us 17540, 17540, plus the 104,160, plus the 28,512, and that gives us 150,212. 150212, 150212, and that is our answer there. So this is normal uh, calculations of the debtors um, collection schedule, and now we must go to our um, cash flow statement, and they say, um, calculate the 6.4, the missing figures indicated 1 to 5 on the cash budget, on the cash budget. Okay, there's our cash budget. Let's see what we can do there. Cash sales. Okay, number one, I prefer to write down what I'm busy doing. I know there's not always time, but I'm going to recalculate cash sales 
4 October. Okay, now I'll go back to the information there. The information will give us um, the, the sales in October, the total sales in October. Can I quickly ask you, do you know what is the difference between budgeted and actual? Budgeted, budgeted and actual. Actual means that's the, the months that's, that, that's in the past, it already happened. And budgeted means we budget for October, November. And remember, that's exactly our two months that we budget for, October and November. So you, you say 372, 372,000, 372,000, and they say that 60% of all sales um, is, on, is for cash. Remember, there's the, there's the 372 and there's the 60%. So we say 372,000 times 60%, and that gives us 372 times 60 over 100, and that gives us 223,200. 223,200. Okay, number two. Number two is um, the cash purchases of trading stock for, for November. Cash purchases. For November. Okay. In this activity, they gave us cost of sales. And remember when you do budgeting, your cost of sales equals to your um, purchases. Cost of sales equals to purchases. Always remember this because it means purchases means the things that we bought. And remember, we bought uh, we bought everything um, at cost price, and that's why we say cost of sales equals to purchases. So the cost of sales for November, we are busy with November, so we go there, 292,000. That was the one that we used in the previous activity. Now we are going to use this one. We go to the cost of sales for November. 292,292,000. And remember, we need to know how many is cash, how many is on credit. And I think they say they at, at number at number E, 50% of the total purchases are on credit. And we are looking for the cash purchases. So that gives us the other 50%. And that gives us 292 times 50%. And that gives us 146,000. 146,000. Okay, number three. Number three is the um, payments to creditors. Payments to creditors. Payments to creditors in October. Very important, in October. Okay, let's quickly go back to our information. Information number E, 50% of all purchases are on credit. Creditors are paid in the month following the month of purchase. Okay, we are calculating for October, so we must go back to September. We must go back to September. Okay, there's our information. Please go back to September because we pay our creditors, number E, in the month following the month of purchase. Creditors are paid in the month following the, the month of purchase to take advantage of a 5% discount. So you must know where to go. You go back to September. September gives you the purchases of September was... Um, 264, so now we use that one there, we work with that one, 264, times first the 50%, but now 264 times the 50%, but now it's the credit side of the 50%, the other one, the, the previous one was the cash side of the, of the purchases, and then we, that gives us 264, times 50%, that gives us 132,000, and then times 95%, and that means that I already subtract the 5%.
If they say 5% discount, you just say, you're more than welcome to calculate 5% and minus it, or you can say 100% minus 5% equals to 95%. So 95% of the 132,000 will be paid in October times 95 divided by 100. So the amount will be 225,400. 125,400 is the amount that we are going to pay in October for payments to creditors. 125,400. Number four on the cash flow statement. Number four on the cash flow statement. Oh, on the cash budget, sorry. On the is interest on loan. Interest on loan. Okay, interest on loan. Interest on loan. And it is whatever is paid in October. Interest on loan in October. Okay. We need a little bit of information. Let's quickly go to our information. I just want to go back to the top. Um, nothing there. Nothing there. Interest on loan is paid on the last day. Uh, okay, that's in 6.6. .6. .6. On the last day of each month and is not capitalized, the 20,000 20, installment on loan was paid on the 1st of November. So there's two questions now. The first question is, what is number four on the cash flow statement? Interest on loan in October. And then we've got question 6.6, .6 and they ask us to uh, calculate the loan balance on the 1st of October. Okay, so we need our cash flow, our cash budget. We need our cash budget. And I'm going to work with this amount. I'm going to work with these two amounts. Okay. Information said that we the interest on the loan is paid on the last of each month. And 20 installment on the loan was paid on the 1st of November. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to say... Um, and the interest on the loan is, where's the loan? There's the loan, 15%. You also need this information, 15% per annum. So 15% of X. What is X? The loan amount times one month. Give me 1625. What am I busy doing? I'm busy calculating the loan amount in November. I'm busy calculating the loan in November. So that gives me X equals to 1625 times 100 over 15 times 12 over 1. And that gives me 1625 times 100 divided by 15 times 12. And that gives me 130,000. 130,000 plus the 20,000 that we paid off plus the 20,000 that we paid off and that gives you 150,000 and that was the loan balance on the 1st of October the loan balance on the 1st of October and that balance was um, 150,000 rand you can say 130 plus 20,000 and that gives you 150,000. Remember, where did we start? We used the interest on loan. We used the interest on loan, interest on loan for November. Then we calculate the loan amount in November, which was 130. Then we add the 20,000 so that we can get to the loan amount in October, the previous month. So that was 150. Now, for the interest on loan for October is 15% of the 150,000. Remember, only for one month, because we work month by month. That is the interest on loan for October. So that gives you 15% of the 150,000 divided by 12 gives you times one month, and that gives you one eight. 
1875. So I did it now roughly. So I think you must just, you must just say 15% of 150,000 for one month. And your answer is 1875. 1875. And number five, number five is very easy. It's the bank balance at the end of the month. Bank balance at the end of the month. Remember, what must you do? You take that, that 38,600 that you see there, that 38,600, and you minus that question. And that question is that one there. Because that one goes to the the end of October is the beginning of November. So we say minus 13,600. What I basically mean is that this one, this one, just make it another color, just make it green. This one goes there at the beginning of the next month. That's why we say. 38,600 minus 13,600, so that gives you 38,600 minus 13,600, and that gives us 25,000 rand. 25,000 rand is number five. 25,000 rand. Question 6.5, the rent will increase on the 1st of November. Calculate the percentage increase for the rent. You take the rent in November. They say it will increase on the 1st of November. So you take the rent. I'm going to work with these two amounts. So you say... 6160 minus 5500 gives us 6160 minus 5500 gives us 660 rand. 660 rand, and you put the 660 rand on the 5500 because it increased from the 5500 to the 1600 to the 6160. And divided by 5,500 times 100 over 1 gives us a 12% increase. It gives us a 12% increase. The interest is paid on the last day. Let's quickly, the balance, it was 15% of X times 1 over 12 was that 1,625. X was 130,000. Plus the 20,000 gives us 150,000. That answer there, 150,000. And the last question on the cash flow is, give a reason for the entry for the fixed deposit 44,000 in November. They ask us, what is this 44,000 there? What is this 44,000 there? And I will just say that it is, um, think about it, fixed deposit, when we put fixed deposit on, when we put money on a fixed deposit, it will be a payment. So when we receive money um, during a specific month, that investment matures. Okay, so the fixed deposit, the fixed deposit, of 44 thousand rand matured during November 2017 and the money was paid into the bank account into the bank account of the business the 44,000 matured okay that is the question on cash budgets and that's that that's what they normally ask you um, to calculate some things and for example one two three four and things like that okay
The next one that we are going to do is a projected income statement. Projected income statement, you are provided with um, a partially completed projected income statement of Senorge stores prepared by the bookkeeper for the period May and June. So now we are going to budget or project it for May and June. Okay, calculate the missing amounts. Okay, there's missing amounts again. I just want to quickly get there. Um, missing amounts A, B, C, D. Let's see what that is. Um, in our projected income statement, there's our projected. Maybe we must just read a little bit. Is it, there's information. Okay, we will come back. Just see what is A, B, C, D. Okay, number A is, um, where's number A? Oh, there, operating profit, operating profit for May. Okay, can you, I just want to quickly say, can you see the difference between the projected income statement and the cash budget? The cash budget was, I'm quickly going back there, was about receipts on the top, money received. Payments, you minus all the payments, money paid. And then you've got your cash surplus or deficit, and then you calculate your bank balance beginning and end of the month. So this is about money. Remember, cash budget is about money. Now, when I get to the projected income statement, you can see an income statement there. Sales minus cost of sales gives you gross profit. Other operating income, that's why its name is projected income statement. It's basically an income statement. It's exactly the same format as an income statement, but we project, we project for the future. We say, okay, what, what is going to happen in May and June? And then in the middle, this colored one was the actual figures of May. So first, we projected, we planned, this and this and this is going to happen in May and June. And then afterwards, they put in the middle, they give you the actual figures for May. And then there's some things that happen there, what, but we will get there. Okay, number A is the operating profit. You cannot go from the top because you don't have all the information there. So just go from the bottom. Just tackle it from the bottom um, because you've got your um, net profit for the month. You've got your interest expense, your, your profit, and you've got your interest income. So just start with the 46,500. We start with the 46,500. And then remember, we add whatever was subtracted, and we subtract whatever was added. 46,500 plus 500 minus 350, and that gives us 46. Um, plus the, oh, sorry, that one is wrong. It was 46,000. 46,000, my mistake, 46,000 plus 500 minus 350, and that gives us 4615. Oh, that is our operating profit. Number B is the cost of sales for June. Cost of sales for June, projected cost of sales for June. Um, we need information. We must go to the top. Let's see what they say. The business markup is 60% on cost. Credit sales comprises 80% of total sales. Okay, we must write it somewhere. Markup, 60% on cost. Um, credit sales, sales are expected to increase. Rent income, um, I, I'm looking for credit sales, I'm looking for purchases, I'm looking for purchases, what happened with purchases, they didn't say anything, I'm looking for cash and credit, oh it's not necessary, oh I'm not busy with the cash budget, <laughs> Ooh. concentration, I'm not busy with the cash budget, what do I mean, it's not necessary to know, what part of the purchases is credit and what part of the purchases is for cash. So the markup is 60% on cost, so we just start with the 198,000 cost of sales for June. Um, 
198,000. Okay, where does this come from? This come from the sales, and the sales, I'm going to quickly go there, but they gave it, they gave it to us, so don't worry. They say the sales are expected to increase by 10% um, per month, and then 12% during July. Okay, but we're not in July yet. Okay, so just if they don't give you the sales for June, if they don't give you the sales for June, the sales for June will be 180,000 from May, 180,000 times 110 over 100, and that gives you 198. That is the 10%. Now you say the 198 is your sales, then you say times 100 divided by 160 because we are looking for the cost of sales. So we say 198,000 times 100 divided by 160. That gives us, let me just do it again, 198,000 times 100 divided by 160. 123,750. Oh, 123,750. Oh. Number C is the wages, the, the wages for the cleaners in June. The wages for the cleaners in June. The cleaner will receive a, a eight percent increase in June. Okay, um, the cleaner will receive an eight percent increase in June. The business employs a sales manager. We're not busy with that now, so let's go back there. You take the one thousand eight hundred rand. And you times it by 108 over 100. What is 108 over 100? That is a plus 8% increase. That gives us 1,800 times 108 divided by 100. And that gives us 1,944. 1,944. Okay, and then number D is the... They're on top, rent income for May, the rent income for May. Information, rent increased by 9% in June. Okay, now we must go back. Um, the same that we did, the same that we did in for the wages, we times it by 108 because this was the 100%. Now we've got the June, we must go back to May, 9%, 9%. And please, you cannot say 9% of whatever you see there. 10028, 10028 times 91, no, 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 that is wrong, times 100 divided by 109. Let me just go quickly, come quickly back to this one. The previous one, if you look at the, at C, if you look at C, the 1,800 is given, and we had to calculate the bigger amount. Okay, so the 100% was given. This is the 100%. And we must calculate the 108%. That's why we say times 108 over 100. Now, we turn it around because we've got the increased amount we've got the increased amount and we are looking for the amount before the increase so that means that we've got the 109 percent already okay it's like selling price and cost price if you've got your cost price you say times 108 over 100 to get to the selling price if you've got the selling price you say times 100 over 109 that gives us 10028 times 100 divided by 109, and that gives us 9200. And please check yourself. So that equals to the 100%. And then you say, okay, 9200 times 9% 9 plus 9200 gives me 10028. There is the correct answer. Please check yourself. Okay, 6.2, taking the amount um, into the account additional information, calculate the following. The monthly salary due to the sales manager. The monthly salary due to the sales manager in June. 
sales manager in June. Um, the business employs a sales manager and an administration manager. The sales manager earns 400 and more than the administration manager per month. The managers are entitled to an increase of 7% from the 1st of June. Okay, we've got two people there. We've got two people there. They mentioned there that the, the salaries is 18,000 for two managers in May. So just see it like this. You say, I've got two people. This is my sales manager and this is my administration manager. Both of them receive a salary of X, but this one received 400 Rand more than this one. So those amounts equals to 18,000. But you, f you cannot now divide by something. Just what you first do is minus the extra 400, then you've got 17,600, then you divided it by two. So you take the 18,000, Minus that extra 400 rand, of, 400 rand of the sales manager, then you divide it by two and you say, okay, 8,800 rand per month, um, per person, sorry, 8,800 per person, but this one is then plus the 400. So this one is 8,800 plus the 400, and that one is 8,800. That is the salaries that they receive. Let's go back to our information. They say the sales manager earns 400 and more than the administration manager and the managers are entitled to an increase of 7% per annum. And the question was, calculate the monthly salary due to the sales manager in June. So I will start with 8,800 plus 400. That gives me 8,800 plus 400. That gives us 9,200. 9,200 um, times 7% increase. 7% increase times 107 divided by 100, and that gives us 9844. 9844. Calculate the total credit size expected in July. In July. Okay, remember, let's quickly go back to our sales in June. We start with the 198,000. We start with the sales for June. The sales for June was 198,000. Okay, let's work from there. Information needed. The sales, credit sales, 10% um, per month by 12% during July times 112 over 100. That gives you that 12% increase in the sales. That gives us 198,000 times 112 divided by 100. That gives us 221,760. 760, but that's not the question. The question was credit sales, and then they say credit sales comprise 2 to 1, 760 times 80% of the sales. 80% of the sales is on credit times 80 divided by 100, and that gives us 177408. 177. 408 is our credit sales, expected credit sales in July. Okay, next question. Comment on the control of the telephone and water and electricity. With, with, what advice would you give, would you, would you offer to Susan? Um, comment on the control of the telephone and the water and electricity. Six point two point three. There you go. Sorry, sorry, I, I skipped six point two point three. Cost price of the new vehicle purchase on the first of May. Cost price of the new vehicle that we purchase on the first of May. Information: A delivery vehicle was purchased on the first of May. 
Vehicles are depreciated at 15% per annum on cost. Um, the accountant did not take this into account when preparing the projected income statement for May. Calculate the cost price of the new vehicle purchase on the 1st of May. Okay. I just want to go back there. 15% per annum is the depreciation on cost, but the accountant did not take it into account when preparing the projected income statement. Then you take the difference between the actual and the budgeted. You take the difference between actual and budgeted. That gives you 9,000 minus 6,200. And that amount there, 9,000 minus 6,200, that 2,800 is the depreciation on the new vehicle. How can I say that? Because they didn't take it into account when they budgeted, but when we see the actual figures there, you see that. So now, 15% of X gives you 2,800. X is the cost price of the new vehicle, 2,800 times 100 divided by 15. 2,800 times 100 divided by 15, and that gives us, uh, uh, that will not, it didn't work out. Let me quickly see. 9,000 minus 6,200 gives us the depreciation. The depreciation. Um, oh, for one month. For one month. Times one month. Remember, it's, it's depreciation for one month times 12 over 1. Let's try again. 2,800 times 100 divided by 15 times 12. And there's our answer the vehicle cost two two four zero 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 two hundred and three. Oh, sorry, I didn't show you the calculation. Okay, let me start again. We calculate the difference between actual and budgeted. That gives us two thousand eight hundred for one month. For one month, fifteen percent of X for one month gives you two thousand eight hundred. So X equals to two thousand nine hundred eight hundred times hundred divided by fifteen twelve over one. And there is the cost price of the new vehicle. Cost price of the new vehicle. Comment on the telephone. If you look to the, at the telephone, water electricity, it was budgeted um, 2000. It was actual 4880. I love to do a calculation and I will say 4880 minus 2000. And I will say the, the variance is, the variance is that it's 2,800, 2,880 more on the 2,000. You put the difference, 2,880, 2,880 on the 2,000, divided by 2,000 times 100 over 1, that gives us 144% increase. 144% increase on whatever we budgeted or variance more than. Okay, um, on the memo they say that it's not well controlled. She has overspent, overspent, under budgeted, no, not well controlled. Overspent, under budgeted, not well controlled. There they mentioned the 144%. And then you can say she must monitor the use of telephone board electricity. She must budget to take into account increase in tariffs or usage. Keep records regularly and investigate the reason for overspending. Maybe people use the telephone account for their own use or they didn't put down the lights when they go home or they didn't close the taps. That is why they must investigate the reasons for overspending. Um, I always say to the learners, don't say in every situation that they under budgeted or they over budgeted. I rather say that they overspent or it was not well controlled. The last question was um, Susan want to reduce the maintenance budget to 500 rand per month and then use the saving for staff training. What should she consider before making this change? 
Listen to the question again. She wants to reduce the maintenance to 500 rand and use it for staff training. The maintenance at the moment, the maintenance at the, at the moment was 2,000 budgeted, sorry, 5,000 budgeted and 2,000 spent. And now she just wants to make it 500 rand and then she will, she wants to use it for, for staff training. There's the memo. The actual maintenance expense is more than 500 rand. It's actually 2,000 rand. She will be un, she will be under budgeting. This will be under budgeting. Will, my maintenance will be ne ne neglected. It can cost you more in the long run. Replacement. Replace the old equipment sooner so that your maintenance is not so high. Benefit of training to the business um, will be, make an impact on the use of machines. Of course, we must train the people. It will be irresponsible to reduce an important expense by so much. So they just say, uh, it's a little bit um, ridiculous to say, okay, at the moment it's 2,000, we want to make it 500, and then uh, your maintenance will be neglected. Sorry, that was the second last question, and the last one is a new competitor started operating from nearby premises. Um, in May, refer to the actual figures for May, and then they ask, explain how Susan responded to this threat, state three points, and then explain whether the response was successful or not. If you look at the sales, the sales was higher. They say um, the sales increase with, in this one, they say the sales exceed the budget by 15,000 because they just budget 480,000 and the sales was 195,000. But then let's start at the top. Bought a new vehicle to do deliveries. Bought a new vehicle. Why the vehicle expenses incurred and depreciation increased. So the moment that we bought the vehicle, we must pay that vehicle with 4,000 rand a month. And there's also more depreciation from, uh, from 6,200 to 9,000. Reduce the markup from 60% to 30%. She reduced the markup from 60% to 30%. Um, that you can see if you take the, in May, 112,500 minus, sorry, 180,000 minus 112,500, 180,000 minus 112,500 gives us 67,500. Then you put that on your cost. Divided by 112,500, then you've got a 60% times 100. That gives us a 60%. 60%. But then you go to the, if you go to the other side uh, that actually happened, you say 195,000 minus 150. Remember, this was budgeted. This was budgeted. That gives you 195. Minus 150, that gives us 45,000. And if you put the 45,000 rand on the 150,000 times 100 divided by 150,000 times 100, that gives us a 30%. 30%. So can you see that she actually planned, she budgeted for a 60% profit markup but the actual profit markup was only 30%. And that I calculated from the, the, these four amounts there. I used those four amounts. Basically, oh, sorry, all of that. I used all of that. And that gives me a, um, the indication of the profit markup. They also mention here that they... Um, she advertised more. She advertised more. The advertisement was from advertising was from um, 2,400 to 9,600. That's also a big, big increase there. That's also one of the things that she did for this competitor. So in the first question, they asked say three points. How did she respond on this threat? She bought a new vehicle to do the deliveries. The, um, uh, then she reduced the markup from 60 to 30% and she advertised more. 
And then they ask, explain whether Susan's response was successful or not. Um, answer for two marks or so on, if it were not successful, because even though sales increased, the gross profit decreased by 45,000. If you go to your information again, they give us the gross profit for, can you see, um, from 67,500 to 45,000. And they say we're not successful because even though sales increased, um, expenses such as cost of sales and vehicle expenses increased significantly because of the new delivery van. So that is the uh, projected income statement. Remember the difference between the cash budget and the projected income statement is that the cash budget is about money and this is about income and expenses for the months that we budget for. Only last one short last question is a problem solving and they love to ask you problem solving now, nowadays in the exams. So I just want to quickly go through this one. Best computer sells one brand of computers. The owner Zanele has three branches in different shopping centers. You will see that often there's three shopping centers. They've, they're busy selling the same thing, but there's, um, there's something wrong in each of the branches. Okay. What you do first is um, you must have something in mind. So before you start answering the question, you must have in mind what can go wrong there. Okay, so I always check the money. I love to check the money and I love to check the amount of goods. So that's what I do first. So um, before I start reading, I will say what can go wrong? What can go wrong? Okay. There's money missing, or oh, there's goods missing. Sometimes you will see that they, they sold too little. So you can maybe say, uh, reasons be the manager is lazy or is in the wrong area. Or the people in that that pe the people is not it's not a popular um, it's not a popular item for selling ice cream in the winter. Of course, it's the sold the sales the sales will be too little, and then sometimes they've got too little stock. That is the four things that I am looking for. And if some of them appear, then I know that is the problem. Otherwise, I will I will search further for other problems. Okay, let's see what we've got. They say, identify one different problem in relation to each branch, quote relevant figures to support your answer. In each case, um, offers are nearly advice on how to solve the problem. The shops are open seven days a week. Normal time is from 8.30 to 16.30, Mondays to Fridays. So normal hours. Normal hours, let's write it down. Normal hours are 160 hours um, a week. And then overtime is a month sorry not a week a month and then overtime is uh, 56 hours per month and then the overtime salary is 1.5 times the normal rate okay let's see what what is wrong where kenny mall uh, 50 units 42 was sold five was returned okay they don't give us the end balance so we cannot see if there's goods missing but we can look at the money Okay, let's quickly check there. The credit sales and the cash sales. The sales together gives me 54,600 plus 79,800. And that equals to 54,600 plus 79,800. 134,400. 134,400. Divided by... Um, Divided by the selling price is 4,200. Divided by 4,200. So that gives you 32. 32 computers sold. And there was 42 sold and 5 was returned. So there is money missing. For Kenny Mall, there's money missing. And the money that's missing is for 5 computers. Uh, missing cash. Missing cash, you can say um, 42, 
minus 5 equals to 42. Sold minus the 5 gives you 37 times 4,200 rand. Times 4,200 rand was 155,400. 155,400. And only, what did we say was deposited? 134,400. Minus 134,400. That was deposited. Minus 134,400. So there was 21,000 rand. M missing cash, 21,000 rand. 21,000 rand. Um, let's quickly go to the second one. I can do the same calculation. I can say 36 minus 12 was sent back times 4,200. That gives me 100, 800. That was the money that we're supposed to, to deposit. And I can say for Hazy, that one was for Kenny. And I can say for Hazy, it is 88,200 plus 12,600. And that gives you, remember, the, it's supposed to be 100, 800, and 88, 200 plus 12, 600 gives you 100, 800. So there's no money missing. There's no money missing there. But what is the problem there? What will you think is the problem? Um, the first thing that I think there is the returns are too high. Returns are too high. Then you can do a calculation. You can say 12 of the 36 times 100 over 1. 12 of the 36. 12 divided by 36, that gives you 12 divided by 36 times 100. That gives you 33%. 33% of all the goods was returned. I also think that they work too much hours over time because they didn't work all the, they also didn't work all the normal times, but can you see these two? They work too much hours over time, 117 hours normal time, 52 over time. And the normal time was supposed to be 160 and they're not near that 160 yet. Too much over time hours. And remember, you must also figures, 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 figures. Always give a figure with your problem. Always a figure with your problem. And then you can just say um, 117 of the 160 normal, normal hours was worked. Um, and that gives you always a percentage, 117 divided by 160 times 100, only 73%. Only 73% of the normal hours was worked, and then they start claiming for overtime. Uh, the last one, the, there's nothing wrong with the overtime. It was only two hours. I think they sold too little. Very low sales. Very low sales. They sold 21, 21 of the 50. And that gives you 42%, 42% sales. A little bit of comment there. Let's quickly go to the memo. They say for the first one, regular inter internal audit. Internal audit for sales and deposits, separation of duties so that people cannot um, take money. It's impossible to take money because that was the missing cash. For the returns, which is too high, purchase quality computers. Make sure the sales assistant knows the product specifications because maybe... He sold the wrong thing, and then uh, a lot of computers came back. They only work 73% of the normal time. Time sheets for normal time set targets and minimize the overtime. Very slow sales volume, only 42. Provide Han with sales assistant or set sales targets. That is the normal things that we say there. Then the next question was... Um, Identify the problems. Calc okay, sorry, that's all. <laughs> that is all. So I think that is yeah, that is the end of the question, and um, that is a normal question that they ask on problem solving. Grade twelves, thank you very much. I really enjoy teaching you. 
I really hope that you learned something and I really um, I hope that you will use these videos to improve your own knowledge and to try to do all the things that I try to help you with. Um, God bless you and thank you very much. Bye-bye.